All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I apologize for any technology uh, challenges. We just had an internet outage uh, uh, in my neighborhood or on uh, the west side of Madison somewhere. So I'm trying to do this from my phone. So I hope everybody can hear me okay. Uh, my name is Gabe Doyle, and I'm the Director of Community Impact with a focus on health at United Way of Dane County. And while we can't be here together today uh, doing this in person, we are uh, absolutely grateful to convene virtual installment of our Working for All webinar series. The first one centered on crisis response and recovery during the pandemic. The second one was around education, and the third focused on economic stability. As we wrap up this series with health today, I want to give a special shout out to our sponsors for making all of this year's webinars possible. Before we get started, I just want to remind everybody, even though we're nine months into this virtual uh, opportunity, um, but just here are some few reminders around best ways uh, and best practices for Zoom. Uh, be sure you're muted during the presentation to minimize any background noise. And if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. This is what this is meant to be. Um, and if we aren't able to uh, address them or if the panel doesn't get to them in real time, we certainly will follow up afterwards. Today, we'll be discussing our community's current needs regarding access to healthcare and mental health resources. And we are so grateful that Jesse Wong from Metastar and our chair of our Health Community Solutions team, as well as Nelsie Stern from Journey Mental Health and the program manager for CBITS, our signature initiative, as well as Renee Mo, our president and CEO of United Way of Dane County. And we appreciate them for joining us to share their expertise and their experience. But before we hear from them, I'd like to talk a little bit about our current focus on health in Dane County. At United Way of Dane County, we believe health is one of the pillars of well being. While we know Dane County, there are many opportunities to access high quality health care in our community. Currently, and for the past 15 years, our health community solutions team has focused specifically on identifying and treating people's health issues early and helping seniors and people with disabilities stay in their home independent and safe. Our health community solutions team is wrapping up a year long process to identify our new priorities that address the current health needs and are reflective of the vast amount of community voices that have been collected through a variety of community health reports. But more than just our health community <laughs> solutions team, our, our Dane County, uh, United Way of Dane County plays, uh, sits at many different tables and sits at many intersections. And one of them is the Dane County Health Council. Uh, I have the privilege of being on the staff team and uh, Renee Mo has, uh, has the honor of being one of the executives um, at the Dane County Health Council. We spent the last two years, or 20 years, I'm sorry, collaborating, designing and refining solutions to the racial disparities that exist in our health systems. Over the last several years, specifically, we have secured $2.25 million uh, from United Way to support DCHCs or Dane County Health Council's work to eliminate the inequities between black and white birth outcomes. Knowing that we lead the country in infant uh, mortality inequities, we recognize that there are a lot of work to do in this space and we remain committed to building a more equitable system of care. As the pandemic and racism as a public health crisis continue on, health is, on the top, is a topic on everyone's mind right now. Cases are surging and people who earn lower incomes are disproportionately impacted by these crises. Finding solutions for these individuals and families is something we at United Way will remain focused on into the new year and beyond. We have many initiatives and programs to support and prioritize health in this community. And I'd like to turn it over to our moderator for today to share about some of those needs we see in Dane County. So please join me in wel welcoming Renee Mo, President and CEO of United Way of Dane County. Thank you, Gabe, and thank you for being such an instrumental health leader in our community. Hi, everybody. Welcome, and thank you for spending your lunchtime with us. Health is a big concept, and we know it's foundational to well-being. As Gabe just pointed out, there are so many factors that impact health, and most of those happen to be aligned with the agenda for change. Education, income, including housing and food, and health. 
In the past several months, there are so many stories of struggle. In Tia's junior year of high school, the pandemic hit and she, was, she began virtual learning. She couldn't see her friends, was unable to participate in spring sports and missed the extra connection and support from school staff. She has struggled with depression in the past, but over the past few months, she's admitted to feeling more anxious and has had suicidal thoughts. Jerome, a single dad of two, lost his job at the beginning of the pandemic. He's struggling to afford care for his son with disabilities. Money is tight and stress is high. We all know Tia's and Jerome's in our community. And because of you, we're building support to increase the help available, zooming in on our neighbors most disproportionately affected. At United Way, our volunteers work really hard to listen to our community, trusting and centering those living disparities and understanding community data, understanding existing resources, understanding gaps, all to frame issues, mobilize resources, and be accountable for results. And in an area as big as health, United Way volunteers have the important and difficult job to make strategic choices to use your precious limited resources targeted toward the greatest needs to make measurable change that positively impacts nonprofit nonprofit partners, the families they support, and necessary systemic changes. It is really inspiring to have a volunteer leader and donor, as well as a nonprofit partner here today to talk about health. Let's pause and recognize all nonprofit partners who have been innovative, nimble, and on the front lines of response. Truly, this happens when we're not in a pandemic, but this year's responsiveness has been tremendous. I wanna shout out Access Community Health, The Rainbow Project, AIDS Resource Center, Central Hispano Urban Triage, the Hmong Institute, and many, many more health partners, and lift up all nonprofits who have so ably transformed service delivery to continue to respond to their families as guidelines for health, cleaning, distancing, and virtual work have changed so quickly and continue to evolve. Thank you all. We are working hard to lift up your stories and mobilize our community's caring power to ensure you have the services needed to respond now and influencing our community's ecosystem for more equitable approaches and outcomes in the long term. Let's frame up today's context. United Way meets weekly with Public Health, the City of Madison County, Healthcare, UW-Madison, and Madison Schools to share information and coordinate response, bringing family perspectives from 211 and nonprofit and business perspectives gleaned through our network of partnerships. According to today's public health snapshot, we have 30,000 confirmed cases with 900 hospitalized and 100 deaths. That is a lot of grief and mourning in our community. And we know the disproportionate impact, as Gabe said, on our Black, Brown, and lowest income neighbors, particularly in the Latinx community. As we acknowledge our country and community have long grappled with systemic racism and historic trauma, we know consequences persist today that we must actively unroot. That includes in philanthropy and service delivery, and healthcare has been no exception. In the health council work Gabe described, focused on eliminating disparities in Black maternal and infant health, these were the key themes that we heard from the community. Shout out to our friends Lisa Payton, Karen, and Annette Miller for leading the engagement into the Health Council Partners and EPIC for this transformative work. Scanning down this list of what our community told us, we can see inequity and in access to core agenda for change goals in education, income, and health. That's what's needed for what we all desire, community health, safety, and well-being, and an opportunity to soar. Now, let's quickly review what our health volunteers are currently supporting. We recognize that mental health is an often overlooked, under-resourced, but highly necessary area of need in our community. 16,000 children and 71,000 adults in Dane County are likely to personally experience a mental or behavioral health issue at some time during their life. And mental health needs are on the rise, especially for school-aged children in our community. Last year, thanks to you, nearly 4,000 Dane County students received behavioral health treatment, helping them focus academically. Over 3,000 sixth graders in five districts were assessed for anger, anxiety, and depression. And there were 331 referred and receiving more in-depth treatment. We also know that dental is a piece of the work that we do with children. Over 3,000 elementary school students received sealants and preventative oral care last year through Celebrate Smiles, and again, in great partnership. In our older adult work, Dane County is home to nearly 75,000 neighbors aged 65 and up. That represents almost 14% of our population. About 5% of them experience poverty. We focused on medication reviews and fall, falls prevention to keep older adults independent in their homes of their choosing. 
Additionally, with more people out of work, families are struggling to afford health care at a greater rate than ever before. Did you know that medical expenses are the number one reason for bankruptcy? So we know how important it is to have quality, affordable health care, and we're working to get as many people as possible access to health insurance. When people have health insurance, they are more likely to get care and consequently increase their life expectancy. That's where Health Connect comes in. Thanks to generous donations from UW Health and Quartz, we're able to provide our Health Connect Premium Assistance Program. Last year, 940 individuals with low incomes are insured with our Health Connect Premium Subsidy Program. We're trying to reach the additional 3,000 or so who are eligible, improving, improving health care outcomes and reducing community costs. 18% of those folks insured last year had no previous health coverage. 27% of HealthConnect participants are people of color, and HealthConnect generated a 2.4 to 1 return on investment of advanced premium tax credits brought into Dane County. These are great results. If you or someone you know is uninsured or insured on the marketplace, call 211 to see if you're eligible and United Way may be able to pay your premiums, boosting your health and your ability to manage other expenses like rent. Open enrollment is happening right now and we're encouraging all who think they might qualify to learn more. And if you know someone who might need assistance, please let them know about this program. So that's a snapshot of what you make possible through your contributions and partnership. The United Way campaign is our community's campaign, and it is a direct response to the emergency and essential long-term reimagining and recovery work. Every dollar raised for the remainder of this year is going to go toward addressing the greatest needs our community faces as the pandemic continues on into 2021. Our goal this year is 17.8 million. We're at about $12 million now with a projection of 17.5. Meeting our goal keeps services and nonprofits whole, Exceeding our goal can provide additional support and services, and we need them. I cannot stress this enough. We really need your help convincing others of what you know so well, that United Way amplifies giving and can reach more people more effectively, that we were built to respond and lead in community crises like this one. I know with your help, we will be, be able to perhaps meet and even exceed our goal. Together, we're going to overcome this, overcome this crisis and fuel progress toward building a Dane County where everyone can succeed in school, work, and life. Thank you. I'm going to move now to our panelists and welcome them to share their thoughts and observations on this work. And uh, joining us today are Jessie Wong. She is the CEO of Metastar and chair of our health work. Also, Nelsie Stern from Journey Mental Health, a partner agency. Thank you both so much for joining us today. We're going to start with Jessie. In addition to being the leader of Metastar and our Health Community Solutions Team Chair, her company has run a strong workplace campaign for over 16 years. Jessie, please introduce yourself and tell us about Metastar and the work you do. Well, th thanks, Renee, and good afternoon. Um, and thanks uh, to Renee and Gabe and the United Way of Dane County team for really raising up this important topic in our community. Um, as Renee said, I'm Jessie Wong, and I get the pleasure to work um, as my day job as at Metastar. And then I've just had the pleasure of working with United Way of Dan County through the Health Community Solutions Team and the wonderful um, experts we have as volunteers on that team. Metastar is a nonprofit organization working to affect positive change in health and healthcare in our community in Wisconsin and nationally. We do this through combining our 45 years of experience in government funded healthcare improvement, our deep understanding of local contexts and relationships, and our knowledge of evidence-based um, interventions and practices to focus on critical issues impacting those most vulnerable in our um, population to drive improvement and accountability across the healthcare continuum. So as Renee talks about the goals of the United Way that is very much aligned to what we see as our core work um, in Dane County and beyond. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you. As a chair of our health community solutions team, how have you seen the definition of health change over the last several years? Yeah, well, great question. Um, I, you know, at, you know, I started at Metastar about 17 years ago, and I've been working with the, the Health CST since 2007. And, you know, through that that time, we've really seen that definition change from, from purely the absence of illness and treating the physical symptoms to a more holistic view of what health looks like, including social and mental well-being. 
Um, this has allowed us to really better understand the factors that contribute to an individual's health. And research tells us that environmental, socioeconomic factors and individual behaviors really attribute for upwards of 80 to 90% of health outcomes. Often we talk about those as, as what people might have heard as the social determinants of health, and that's really been the major priority in the past few years. Health and healthcare improvement is no longer focused on just the healthcare system, but is really influenced by these key determinants in our environment, such as homes, schools, workplaces, neighborhoods, and communities. The conditions in which we live explain in part why some Americans are healthier than others and why Americans generally are not as healthy as we could be. Brilliantly stated, thank you. Uh, we know the pandemic is affecting all areas of life for our community members. What is healthcare's response to the effects of the pandemic? Well, first of all, I wanna you know, thank all of the frontline workers who are supporting our community through this pandemic, both at the healthcare systems and the community response. They have been working tirelessly to protect and treat those most impacted and have really stepped up from the start to put themselves in harm's way for the betterment of our community. So thank you so much. We couldn't be where we are today without you. Um, there are so many ways that the health com care community has responded to this pandemic. Um, so I will do my best to um, just maybe highlight the top, you know, the top few that I can that I can think of. Um, almost immediately, they began engaging individuals in new and innovative ways to ensure that, that everybody is getting care, um, especially those with most vulnerable and chronic conditions. Telehealth has been around for a while, um, but prior to the pandemic, just about 14% of Americans have, have tried telehealth once. And since this outbreak, according to a 2020 telemedicine report, that number has increased to 57. And those percent and those with chronic conditions, um, it's increased to 77%. So the healthcare system really had to adapt and quickly implement this and expand this technology, which is probably the fastest implementation of healthcare technology I have seen. Um, the other thing is awareness building, you know, doing TV ads and public campaigns and messaging patients and even public and private partnerships to spread awareness. We're seeing local physicians acting and stepping up to be our Wisconsin-based Dr. Fauci and the experts stepping um, in to spread facts and minimize the misinformation getting um, that's out there to make sure that we're getting um, the right information of the in the hands of consumers to make informed decisions. Obviously, treatment. Um, I mean, we're learning and adjusting across the healthcare system and really working across um, organizations and systems to ensure that we can treat those that are suffering from COVID-19 as we are learning how to best treat them. Um, on a similar note, reporting constant surveillance and clinical data to inform decision makers at all levels on trends and patterns and hopefully making some shifts to prevent further spread. We have been fortunate to have local health systems supporting vaccine clinical trials and all are currently preparing and training staff to administer vaccines once available. There is, there is always more to be done and more to learn, but overall our healthcare system has demonstrated that not only the quality of care they provide, but how much that they have invested in the health of our communities. So much innovation and care, and we echo your gratitude to all of our healthcare workers. Thank you. That was a great comprehensive response. How has COVID-19 challenged the health community solutions team to think differently about the roles and responsibilities of the volunteers? Yeah, um, it, it has, you know, it's been an interesting year because the, the, the Health CST is made up of volunteers that are experts and are living in our community and are working in our healthcare systems and our community systems. And so they're, they're challenged with, you know, many of these same things, um, transitioning to working from home or putting them, you know, being at the front lines. Um, but amongst the pandemic, I think the other thing that the Health CST has really seen and learned through the voices of our volunteers um, is that, you know, Dane County is a place with incredible high quality health care, mm -hmm. but, but despite that and ranking high um, nationally, we have large health disparities. And this was even more emphasized with the pandemic. We're seeing people of color being disproportionately in fact, um, impacted and dying of COVID-19 at greater rates. And the, the, the role of the, the, the volunteers have really taken on the responsibility of that through the health CST. You know, we talk a lot about racism as a public health crisis and, 
and how to align our priorities and funding to programs and agencies working to break down systemic racism in our community. If we desire a community absence of these disparities, we must aim to eliminate the structures that facilitate those inequities. You know, getting back to my earlier comment about the social determinants of health, it's in, health is influenced by every aspect of how and where we live and access to secure and affordable housing and safe neighborhoods and good paying jobs and quality early childhood education and mental health supports are examples of important factors that can put people on a path to a healthier life. And our volunteers in the health community solutions te team take that to heart and they really feel the weight of that. But access to these opportunities looks different depending on where you live, the color of your skin or the circumstances you were born into. And we need to do better. We are committed to doing better. Thank you, Jesse. Nelsie, let's move to you and talk about mental health. Journey and other partners have grown CBITS, where students who have experienced trauma and anger, anxiety, and depression are being supported to heal. Please introduce yourself and tell us about Journey Mental Health, the CBITS partnership, and your role. Sure. So my name is Nelsie Stern. I am the CBITS um, manager for um, for Journey and for the our partnering districts. So we have been um, running CBITS groups. And for those of you who are not familiar with it, CBITS stands for Cognitive Behavioral Intervention for Trauma in Schools. Um, this is a group intervention that we provide to partnering districts um, and have done so since um, 2004, 2005. And in 2007, United Way um, of Dane County generously uh, continued our funding after our SAMHSA grant had ended. So this is a program that we run for primarily middle school students, although there's a growing involvement with high schools into our program. Um, and what we do is uh, screen students across these grades to identify students who have experienced trauma and um, have that have resulted in um, traumatic stress and provide them the appropriate intervention to help them recover from um, the impact of trauma. I have been in this role for about four years and prior to that uh, was a family uh, and child therapist and prior to that a school counselor in New Orleans where I also ran CBITS groups. So my involvement in CBITS has gone about um, eight or nine years at this point. Um, we are growing every year. We get more schools and more districts who are requesting our services because they are uh, acutely aware of the impact that trauma is having on their students and their ability to attend and succeed academically. Thank you. And it's, it's just marvelous to have your long history working with our kids and in this area in our community. How has the def definition of mental and behavioral health changed in Dane County in the last several years? Sure. So I think the there's a growing awareness of the impact that mental health has on physical health. So the term mental health is being rolled more closely into physical health. And I think that that's really important. Um, for our young people, we know that uh, problems with mental health leads to difficulty with school and academic success. Um, and thanks to various research studies, such as the ACE study conducted by the CDC and Kaiser, there's now a much more clear connection between adverse childhood experiences and physical health. So in other words, we know that trauma is affecting physical health of children and adults. Um, the other thing that I think is changing is that there have been many more conversations and much more attention provided to historical and race-based trauma. We know that people of color have been disproportionately affected by this pandemic, but of course these disparities aren't new and they've impacted both physical and mental health of BIPOC people for a long time. I'm seeing the conversation about equity and the effects of racial trauma being addressed much more directly and more often in the mental health arena, both for youth and adults. Thank you. We know that the pandemic is creating additional challenges for children's mental health. Can you share what you're seeing and, what, and also about current programs? Sure. So we are absolutely seeing an increase in students reporting anxiety and depression. Um, you know, interestingly, there's for some students, there's also some relief from anxiety uh, that was caused by being in school, either social or academic anxiety. But the most concerning is the increased rates of depression, anxiety, and suicidality that we're hearing from students um, through our work with CBEDS. Um, for the most part, we're hearing that students have an increasingly um, intense sense of grief and loss over missed social opportunities, over um, worry for health and safety of loved ones. We're also hearing from a lot of students about racial injustice, which the pandemic has brought again into the foreground of community conversations. 
Students are sharing about instances of fear and worry and anger over how they or their family um, or people that look like them have been treated. So that's a little bit about what we're hearing. What is happening with programs is that um, from last March, we've seen programs move really quickly to adapt to virtual delivery. In a lot of our outpatient um, agencies and our, our community partners, we've seen um, how quickly they were able to move to uh, providing telehealth services, some within days of the shutdown. This meant that a lot of people receiving individual therapy had only a small break in services, if any at all. Uh, many community programs uh, for adults and emergency services really didn't stop at all, which meant that there was um, you know, very, very little impact um, in some ways to the services that were being offered. We saw providers gear up and continue to move into the community and provide those services. At the schools, um, I just wanna acknowledge the incredible work that so many student support services teams have done in order to be able to provide assistance and support for their students. Um, we've seen these student support services teams coordinate with one another and with their community partners, such as myself, to adapt to virtual learning. Um, you know, many mental health programs existed in our schools before the pandemic started, and they're continuing to run today, although they look quite different. So for instance, in my program, in the CBITS program, every year we conduct a universal screener for our partner schools. And to date, um, we have screened over 4,000 students across the county to determine if they are um, experiencing symptoms of traumatic stress. We have been able to adapt our program to provide um, our mental health interviews based on those screenings and are able to connect with students virtually to determine what interventions they're needing. Um, we've been able to coordinate with schools to uh, connect students to individual therapy at an increased rate, which is sort of speaks to the, um, the strength of our partnerships that we've been able to navigate that and become flexible in our ability to connect students. Uh, the one thing though that we are seeing that is concerning is that we know that when students haven't been connected to services before, they feel some ambivalence about doing so virtually. So that has been something that we are continue, con continuing to navigate and, and troubleshoot. But we do know that students that were already connected to services prior to the pandemic largely have not stopped services despite the fact that they're being asked to do so via telehealth. That work and those partnerships just fill me with such gratitude. Thank you so much for continuing that great work and that innovation, so critically important. For parents and caregivers, how can we support our children during this time? Sure, this is such a great question. And I think one that is so tricky for so many of us who have kids at home. Um, I think the best thing that we can do to support our children is to go easy on them and go easy on yourself, right? As parents, we know um, how difficult this time is for us. Um, and for, for children who may not understand the full impact of what is happening, even more so they are feeling um, a level of confusion and anxiety uh, that is more acute than ever. So know that their emotions are going to go up and down frequently, a little bit like a roller coaster. Um, I don't know about anyone else in this group, but I have a teenager. And so we see this a lot anyway, and it's more intense with the pandemic. Um, and possibly you've even recognized this kind of up and down in emotions in yourself. But our students, our kids are dealing with so much loss, the loss of friendships, of sports, casual interactions in the hallways, and loads of other activities. So the best thing we can do is really to acknowledge their worries and their anger and their frustration with all that's going on. It's normal for them to have difficulty sleeping right now and to feel more irritable. And this can be a real challenge for parents as we're trying to navigate working from home and online school. So taking care of yourself is a really important way that you can take care of your kids. Um, finding time to take breaks, um, get away for a minute or two, doesn't have to be long, but this self-care is critical to supporting, being able to support our kids. Um, and also, if your child is having difficulty functioning, don't hesitate to reach out to your school social worker or to a mental health provider. There are many kids uh, right now who have never needed support, this type of support before, but may need it. And providing that support as quickly as possible will go a long way to mitigating the effects of it long term. Outstanding. Thank you so much for championing self-care and resilience as you do each and every day. Here's my last question for both of you. What is keeping you up at night and how can our community respond? Jesse, let's start with you. Thanks. So um, speaking of sleeplessness, right, and children, um, and I, my son will appreciate, my teenage son will appreciate that I should 
you know, not get on him for not sleeping as much lately. Um, I mean, these are times I anticipate many of us are losing sleep over what the future will look like and how we will overcome all of the current challenges. Um, a few things that rise to the top of my list, you know, looking at it from the healthcare system, you know, how do we move beyond the pandemic by creating equal access to this vaccine once available to those most vulnerable and at risk in our community? We need to support our local public health agencies and the healthcare system in spreading fact-based information and getting people vaccinated. We need to break down um, environmental and societal bar barriers to quality healthcare for all. Wisconsin is the only state in which life, the life expectancy gap between blacks and whites have grown significantly, particularly for women. Um, Martin Luther King said, of all forms of inequality, injustice in healthcare is the most shocking and inhumane. Um, it is time for true change around racism in our community. And lastly, I think we have a long road ahead of us. The post-pandemic recovery is going to be challenging. We are seeing mental health as, as um, Nelsie recommended, seeing mental health at all time highs, social, isol social isol isolation, I can't say that word, sorry. Substance abuse and unemployment levels are all rising. We have some work to do. Um, the good news is we have a strong system and community in Dane County. We have amazing agencies such as Journey Mental Health and the United Way of Dane County. And so I really personally look forward to the partnerships and the work continuing and look forward to kind of continuing um, to make impact in our community as we move forward. Nelsie. Uh, sure. So lots keeps me up at night. <laughs> um, but one of the things that I'm most concerned about in terms of mental health and the youth um, in our area um, is really what we don't know about what they're experiencing right now. I referenced before that some students are not necessarily engaging with supports that are available. And this is understandable considering how much they're asked to be online. Um, and we really don't know the full extent. What we do know is that um, CPS calls are down. That doesn't mean these things aren't happening, that abuse and, um, and, and such things aren't happening. It just means that we're not hearing about it. So I really worry about what we don't know about how students are really doing. And I worry about when schools do reopen, when things open up, like Jesse said, we need to really be prepared for how to respond to the needs that come to the surface once we're allowed to be back together. Um, I worry about what the plans will look like and how schools will be able to address those, those needs for students because I anticipate that um, we are going to need a lot more interventions and a lot uh, more prioritizing of mental health for young people in our schools. Thank you. Wow, thank you both so much. Uh, such insightful responses. And we are right there with you sharing those worries and committed to being on the front lines to respond together. So thank you so much. Obviously your leadership is demonstrated in every word in your passion, your conviction. And thank you for the work you do and for all the time that you volunteer. The work of United Way certainly can't happen without great partnerships like these. And we're incredibly grateful. United Way is really humbled to take pride, uh, humbled in, in breathing issues, mobilizing resources and being accountable for results. The work you do makes us proud and you make that possible. And here's how you can help even more. Our 2 on one helpline, which is Dane County's most comprehensive health and human services database is here to provide information and referrals. Our trained representatives connect callers with healthcare options, mental health resources, addiction response, and more 24 seven. But we need campaign dollars to ensure nonprofits have services available when neighbors are referred. Call volumes are way up. If you or someone you know would like to volunteer to help respond to non-medical COVID-19 related calls, go to volunteertime.org to learn more and sign up. There's just an hour of training and you can volunteer virtually. And certainly if you need help or outreach, please call or text 211. We also need to raise more money. Your contributions to the community's campaign support emergency response and the long-term systemic change that is needed. Please consider making a gift through your workplace campaign or online. The link is in the chat. Let's keep our community financial response growing. And please share this message and share the link in the chat with your networks. As we plan for our 2022 United Way Centennial, we'd love to hear your expectations of United Way over the next 100 years. Please visit our website, unitedwaydowney.org, to sign up for a 90-minute virtual conversation. 
we'll use that to inform our next strategic plan, which will be announced in conjunction with our centennial in 2022. And this year's holiday wish list is published now, and you can find that at volunteeryourtime.org. Any 501c3 can publish their wishes, and we encourage you to make a wish come true. Thank you, Jesse and Nelsie. It's because of you and other robust partnerships that we're able to respond to our neighbors' living challenges like Tia and Jerome, who we heard about at the beginning of our meeting today. We can impact the systems to create increased equity in education, income, and health because of the power of many working for all, which you've demonstrated so beautifully today. Thank you all of us, all of you for joining us today. And I hope you'll share what you learned with friends, family, colleagues, and keep that conversation, feedback, learning, and volunteering, advocating, and giving going. Gabe, okay, we'll turn it back to you. Thank you so much, Renee. Uh, I mean, this is just a great example of the realization that when you really truly do have the power of many working for all, our community soars. So I wanna thank our generous sponsors who made these, uh, this project and this year's Working for All webinar series possible. Um, big thank you to our panelists today um, for not only sharing space with us, uh, but for your continued commitment to our community. Uh, thank you, Renee, for your leadership and your courage and for being present on these webinars throughout the year to share back the great work that we're doing at United Away. And thank you all for joining us today. We hope you keep in mind what we discussed and do what you can to help make Dane County a place where everyone can succeed in school, work, and life. Thank you very much and have a great, wonderful day and enjoy your holiday season however you do. Thank you so much.